Hi, this is Priest with Lockpickers United, and today we're going to be talking about dimple locks. What they are, how they work, how they differ from some of the other locks that we're familiar with, such as pen tumblers, and most importantly, how do we get into them. So a dimple lock works on the same basic principle as a pen tumbler lock. Um, in this video, I'm not going to go into the basic uh, mechanics of how locks work. If you need a refresher or you'd like to know basic lock terminology, um, feel free to look back into some of the other Mentorship Monday videos where we do cover the basics of how locks work. But just as a quick recap, we have a set of teeth on a key. These teeth correspond with pins on the inside of the keyway. As the pin is lifted to the shear line, that allows the plug to turn. So as we insert the key, those pins run along the, the, the teeth of the key to then rotate the plug. We've got key pins, driver pins, and springs. A dimple lock works in the same basic function. Instead of having the pins aligned vertically with the keyway, here let's use the DOM, they are aligned at a 90 degree orientation to the keyway. So if you look inside, this is a DOM IX10 kg. You can see the pin is aligned perpendicular to the keyway instead of parallel to the keyway. So we still have all the same basic principle or the same basic um, mechanical function as a pin tumbler lock. We've got a key pin, a driver pin, and springs. Once we insert the key, it pushes all of the pins to the shear line and we're free to rotate the key. The difference being dimple keys have dimples instead of teeth. So this key acts in the same way that a pin tumbler acts like this. So as we slide our key in, the key pins will sit inside these divots here and allow those key pins and driver pins to meet at the shear line. This is an interactive element. Um, they meet at the shear line and then allows us to rotate the, the, the plug. So you can see this array of dimple locks I have laid out. If you're familiar with the Lock Pickers United belt system, these are laid out from least difficult to most difficult. This is an Avis 75-751-50. This would be a green belt. This is a multi-lock junior. This is a purple belt. This is a Yale Superior. This is also a purple belt. This is a Dom IX-10 KG. It's a red belt. This is a Sergeant Queso, which is a red belt. This is a Kaba 20, which is a black belt. And this is a Bantam M2002, which is also a black belt. I've picked these locks. I have not picked the Sergeant Queso, the Kaba 20, or the Bantam M2002, although I am close on the Bantam. I'm really close on the Bantam. Um, so I thought what we do is get one of these picked open so that you can see the basic functions of how picking these work and then we'll get one opened up so we can see the basic internal parts. So let's go ahead and get one of these opened. I've chosen the Abus 751 Bravo 50 as the lock that I'd like to pick because it allows me to highlight another um, tensioning technique that is common with uh, both dimple picks or dimple locks and pin tumbler locks. Now, how do, we, how do we pick this? How do we tension it? As you can see, obviously, because the pins are oriented at a 90 degree uh, angle or perpendicular to the keyway, we can never get a standard hook in there to lift these pins up. What we can get is what we call a flag pick. This flag pick is designed so not to use a rocking motion like a standard hook, but to use a rotational motion. So that as you can see the pin in there as we saw in the DOM, we can stick our, our flag pick in there and then we can rotate this pick and set those pins in this fashion here. So we also generally will use a different tensioning technique. So I could absolutely um, put a standard tensioner in here and, and, and get after this with my flag pick. What I'm gonna do on this one, because this one is what's called a dead core, I'm gonna use something called float tensioning. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use two different Z bars. So this is called a Z bar. This one happens to be made, made by Sparrows. Um, and what this allows me to do is control this plug 
and the rotation of this plug in both directions to a fine, minute detail. And what I'm doing here is I'm simulating the counter rotation that's provided for us from a spring-loaded core. Because this is a dead core, which means it doesn't have a spring that's providing counter rotation, we can't use the natural rotation of a spring of a sprung core to overcome spool pins. This particular rock has spool pins in it. And as we normally pick spool pins, we allow the plug or the core itself to give us that counter rotational movement as we bring the lip of that um, spool past the shear line. Well, we don't have that in a dead core. So what we're doing is we're simulating that by providing our own counter rotation. So we're, there are, are a number of different manufacturers that make flag pick. Um, if you'd like to, this happens to be uh, by multi-pick, but Sparrows make some, uh, Honest Dong Shi, which are great um, starter picks and just great picks in general. They do take some work. So this is this is how they come from the factory. And this is one that I've, I've filed down and polished to make as an effective pick. If you'd like to see how to do that, check out Dig's video. He's got a fabrication video on how to how to clean up cheap Chinese picks uh, like this one and make them into actually just great functional picks. This, these picks work just fine. Um, these are nice picks. I like dimple locks, as you can see. I like working on dimple locks. And so I went ahead and got the the um, multi-pick EVG Pros. I really like them. They're very comfortable, but honestly, um, these these picks work just fine. They're they're a great pick. Uh, I've picked a number of these locks. I think I picked the Dom with these. So they're be careful with that. That's something we'll talk about too. Is dimple locks can be what we call pick eaters. They're very easily to break picks, especially on this Dom because it's got shark teeth uh, shaped fin or pins. So here here we go. So I'm providing rotational force or torsional force but what we call tension. So I'm providing counterclockwise tension, clockwise and counterclockwise tension so I can move this here. I'm just gonna insert my pick and you can see this warding that we're moving around here. I'm having to navigate around this warning. This is actually a, a tricky little lock. Sometimes I can get it open very quickly. Sometimes it takes me a little bit, but navigating this warding is pretty tough because I've got some deeply set pins. And you can see, this is the key for this lock, that each one of these dimples will line up with a pin on, in the inside and the, so then that sets it. And it's actually kind of a little tricky lock, but not because the pins are so tricky, but because of getting around this warding. You can't just rotate. You have to rotate and actually move your pick laterally to get some of these deeper pins set and then making sure you don't overset the pin in front of it. So here we go. Providing counter or clockwise and counterclockwise rotational force, mostly clockwise. I'm gonna start trying to set pins, so. Pin one, nothing on two, there's three, working on four, there's four, nothing on five, come back to one. Okay, I'm getting a little counter rotation. So what I was, so that meant it was just wanting to push against my, my rotational force. And so I'm just providing just that natural counter rotation to come across that spool. Nothing on two, nothing on three, nothing on four, nothing on five. Not quite sure what I'm hung up on. What I'm feeling for is counter rotation, and I'm picking this the same way I pick any standard pin tumbler lock. I'm looking for a binding pin. Just quickly set. I'm looking for a binding pin, and then I'm going to set it. And then I look for the next binding pin, and I set it until we get an open. So that was pin one and two, three. Five. Okay, now I'm coming back and I'm feeling for counter rotation. Got a little counter rotation on one. I'm gonna let him go for a second. He may be there. We'll see. Go to two. None on two, none on three. All right, so let's go ahead and see if one will get a little more. Nope. Okay, I'm 
quite sure again what we're hung up on, but we are hung up on something. Like I said, sometimes this lock will open quickly, but more often than not, it puts up a pretty good fight for a green lock. And so that's an important thing to know too. So there we go, we just dropped into a deep false set. Pick the lock that's in front of you. That's that's a, a saying that I've had going through my mind recently. It's like, well, you're supposed to, it's supposed to be a green lock, so it's easy. Or you're supposed to be able to pick this lock with, um, you know, in the same direction that you're tensioning. Well, that's true. There are a lot of general principles that go into picking locks, and we, we don't want to throw those out quickly. But if you're just hammering away at a lock, and it's not doing what you think it should be doing because of what everybody else says, Try something different, mix it up a little bit, because oftentimes I've found that following conventional wisdom on a lock, there we go, we've almost got this now, following conventional wisdom on a lock doesn't always get it open. Um, you know, there, there are a lot of people who have gone before us who have picked these locks, but you need to pick the lock that you're holding in your hand, and it, it's not supposed to do this or supposed to do that. If you've got a feeling that your lock should do something else, go ahead and go with that feeling. We're in a very deep false set. I'm not quite sure what I've got going here. No rotation there. There we go. I'll get one off of this one. Look at that. I just had to go to a deeper pick, I think. This is real life right here. This is real life picking. I may reshoot this, but I may not. I may just let it roll because this is real life picking. Another thing too, don't be discouraged by people you see on YouTube who are opening locks in two and three minutes. They work hard to get those times down to two and three minutes. They've a lot of time learned the binding order. There we go, now we're open. They've learned the binding order. Um, now my pick is stuck probably until I until I relock this lock, but that's no problem. So there we go, we have an open. Um, but what I was saying, they, they practice a lot with that lock to get it open in that way. So don't get discouraged if, if you've got a lock and somebody else is opening it in three minutes or four minutes and it's taken you 10 minutes, that's okay. It takes you what it takes you. Uh, just stick with it and, and your times will go down too if you wanna get faster or not. So, well, let's get one of these locks opened up and we can see what's going on in the inside. I think we'll take this multi-lock down and, um, and uh, see what's inside. So let me get set up and we'll take this multi-pick. We'll get this multi-lock uh, junior and we'll see what's inside. Okay, this is the multi-lock junior. This is a dimple lock. This is what the key looks like. This utilizes a pin in pin principle. And I think we've had um, I think we've had a demonstration with op amp on picking a multi-lock cam lock. Uh, so let's open this up and let's see the internal pieces and how they how they differ and how they are alike to a standard pin tumbler lock. So I'm going to break this down like any other pen tumbler lock. You can tell I still have the cam bar on this one. Let's move some of these locks. I really enjoy dimple locks. I, I, I like, like the way they operate, like the way they work. They're challenging to pick. Um, they've got lots of benefits to it. So, but these pick just or these break down just like standard locks do. So I'm gonna put my key in. Turn this to a 45 degree angle, roughly. Grab my follower. You know, when you're taking down locks, I, I see a lot of of chatter about improvised um, tools for taking these locks down. You know. Um, 
if there's any way that you can swing it with your budget, a follower set is a really handy piece of, of kit to have. And so I'm just gonna take this end and make sure that I'm not oriented to the Bible like this, although I've done that. Man, I've learned more about locks, gutting locks than I have picking them probably. And so I'm, I'm being conscious of where my pins are here and where my pins are here so I don't dump them all out like I have done. The first multi-lock I, I ever gutted, I dumped all of the pins out. So I'm just gonna make sure to push that through like so. There. And now you can see our pin system. So as our keys go in here, our key slides in and our dimples in our key are going to line up with the, the key pins as we slide in. And because there's no spring pressure down, they may be, help, they may be holding up. But get those oriented right there. Now, as you can see, all of those pins now are flush and that would allow this to rotate. So here, i just like to interject a little picking theory. As we are picking these multi-locks, it's very important that your pick can fit inside of these outer pins. And so the way that we pick these, I'm just gonna pick them in so they're, a couple of them are over lifted. When we're sliding our pick in, we're going to stop on the front edge of this outer pin and we're going to pick it. We're going to stop on the front edge of this pin. And we're going to pick that pin. Then we're going to pick this outer pin, or the binding order. It's not necessarily going to go front to back, although that would be nice. But we're lifting each one of these outer pins on the front lip here. And then this one gets lifted here. And then this one gets lifted here. Once all of your outer pins are set, you're going to come back and you're going to set your inner pins. Now, the inner pin, as you can see on the key, hopefully you can see, that inner pin sits higher than the outer pin, so it needs to be pushed up further. To do that, your pick absolutely has to fit inside of, of the outer pin. So one of the problems people have as they're trying to pick these locks is they take their flag pick and they're, they're lifting their outer pins, but they're using a pick that's too big. You can see the, the diameter of this interior hole is smaller than the width of the head of this pick. There's no way that this pick would ever pick or ever set that inner pin. It is too wide. And so what I've done with this, this one happens to be a black flag, but you can use others. What I've happened to do with this is I've made this pick so that it fits inside the diameter of that outer hole. So as I slide my pick in, I'm gonna go ahead and put my Z bar in there. That's gonna help steer my pick. As I stick my pick into this keyway and I'm starting to pick these pins, I will pick the outer pin like this, and then I would pick the inner pin. Let me get on an inner pin here. It's hard because they're, they don't, there's no spring pressure on them. But when they're sprung, you can lift. Yeah, it's gonna be tough to see. Let's see if I can provide some downward pressure. You lift there, the inner pin separate from the outer pin. So you can see, I can push that inner pin and again, if there was spring pressure down on that outer pin, that outer pin would be staying. But I'm, I'm coming in there and I'm rotating my flag on the center of the inner pin. And then I will rotate my flag on the front edge of the outer pin. So the outer pin gets set and then the inner pin gets set. Those get set separately. They each have to go to the shear line. So there, there you go. I'm, I probably, well, let's take them out. So there's one, and that's the inner on one, and the inner on five. I'm 
Always have your toolbox handy. I'm always reaching for tools that I wasn't expecting to need. All right, so here's the outer pin on one. There's the pin set on two. So I've got this torpedo pin and this inner pin. There we go. We have to defeat that. I have picked this lock. I picked this lock for my purple belt. There's the inner pin for three. That's a big, huge bummer. I'm not sure which one of those go in. We can find out, though. And there. Okay. So as you can see, same standard principle. We've got key pins. Drive. These are the key pins. And we've got just key pin chambers in the plug. And then the Bible is the same way. So we've got driver pins. I won't break all these driver pins down. I just want you to see that it's the same basic operation as a pin tumbler. So there's your spring. And pins went flying because that's what pins do. Here we go. So there's the inner, I'm not gonna pull it out, but there's the inner and the outer springs, as you can see. That one also has to get to the shear line. And that's what you're lifting as you're driving this pin through the outer pin into the inner pin on the driver pin. And so there's a lot going on in these locks, um, but the basic function, the basic function is the same. There you go. That's the basics of pin tumblers or of dimple locks. Uh, again, thank you for sticking with us with, L with Lock Pickers United. This is Priest. If you have any comments or questions, please write them down below and uh, have a great day.